Hello everyone and welcome to a video here on my second channel which is about using OBS to capture with NVIDIA NVEC or Intel QuickSync which are transcoders and quite likely built into your computer already you know if you have the right hardware and a lot of other programs that capture like OBS does um, they don't use that they use your CPU to do the transcoding and of course your CPU is running Windows it's playing the game and it can impact the performance of the game negatively and so in this video I'm going to quickly sort of go over you know uh, all about that and I do want to point out this video is sort of casual it's just me talking it's a straight record and upload because it's on my second channel this is just something that I talk to other youtubers about quite often so I wanted to make a video of it to kind of document it and let you know exactly um, what's going on so first of all I'd like to sing some praises for OBS I love it I think it's great it's the best um, software that I've used it's very flexible because it uses the transcoders it doesn't impact game performance and one thing I don't like about it is it doesn't work with DPI scaling very well you can see there's some funkiness up here uh, when I right click on something it'll appear on a different place to the screen as what it captures it can you see how the uh, cursor sort of jumps back and forth it's kinda odd uh, but it's manageable, you can work with it, and you've got a nice flexible range of things to capture here. So you can you know, have multiple sources running at once, very configurable, uh, very light on the computer because it's using the transcoder. So anyway, we're going to open up the settings, and I'm going to show you where the transcoder options are. If you go down to encoding, um, it's this right here. Chances are these two might be greyed out, and you might have this one selected right here. I think X264 uh, is just a technology for encoding so basically this means you're using your CPU now QuickSync is a technology that Intel have developed and it's hardware inside your chipset if you have a modern Intel chipset chances are you can use QuickSync so Google the type that you have if this is grayed out because you'll probably need to enable it through your motherboard so Google that find out if your chipset supports it go into the mother uh, motherboard go into the I forget what they call it the BIOS yeah the BIOS and can uh, enable it there and yeah you might have to do a few other hacky things to get it to work in Windows as well so if you're having trouble with that um, just Google around there is a way to get it enabled I managed to do it eventually anyway moving on to NVIDIA NVEC if you have a uh, modern NVIDIA graphics card chances are you've got a built-in transcoder I have a GTX 970 and I didn't have to do anything to get it enabled if you have one of those and it's grayed out just again use Google because lots of people uh, you know talk about how to do this stuff online and you can find that and you can enable it um, anyway so once you're using these two right here you're no longer using your CPU to do the recording and transcoding which means you get better performance from your games now I've used uh, Fraps before I've used DX Story DX Story has the advantage of multiple audio tracks which OBS has in its MP edition but I haven't moved on to using that yet so I can't say too much about it um, and yeah the, the the performance is greatly impacted which can be um, an issue but anyway um, so now that we're using the tra transcoder to capture we there's still like more things you need to know about it basically um, so using CBR or not I don't really know what's the best uh, I've just got quality set to 10 the highest and I think you're supposed to have a buffer as well this is my profile for straight to video I don't do any editing this just goes um, straight up onto YouTube at 4 megabytes per second now when I record with my 1080p profile this is slapped all the way up to 72 megabytes per second and that's about the most that I'm comfortable with pushing it because this is the bandwidth at which you're capturing and I'm going to talk about a lot of stuff here about this because I think this is another really important point as well as offloading the capturing onto your hardware um, but all of this stuff ends up on YouTube and YouTube can press the hell out of it when they send it to people so um, some people invest a lot of money with hard drives like um, you know fast spin cycle hard drives or solid state drives to record to because the idea is oh you know you know get a solid state drive it's better to record to and my videos will be better um, not if you don't set it up properly it won't be you have to know how to set it up and this is part of that and it all ends up on YouTube anyway so for me it's about cost effectiveness I got myself a, a 7200 RPM drive which cost a little bit more than 5400 but you can push it a bit further then the step up from that is to uh, 10,000 RPMs and that cost a heck of a lot more money so it didn't seem worthwhile to me um, so anyway I have a large recording drive and um, yeah, I record at 72 meg megabytes per second. I could possibly increase that, but the point here is that you want to capture in the best quality that you can at a reasonable 
price, you know, not throwing money at everything because then you're going to encode your videos down and then YouTube is going to uh, compress, would have been the words he's there, compress it down again and stream it out to whoever's watching your video. Um, so there is alternative ideas and information out there where people say it's better to record at a lower quality because the compression is being done while you record. Then when you render a video for YouTube to give it to YouTube, um, it takes less time to encode because some of that compression has already been done. Now I always thought it would have worked the other way around, but it does make sense that if it's already compressed and smaller file size, uh, the rendering process has less to do. So if you do want to... Um, yeah, like save time rendering, you could possibly lower the bit right here. I I would be against that because for me it's like I'm already like capturing it and it's going to be compressed. Then I've got to try and uh, render it and it's going to lose more information. And then you've got to upload it to YouTube. So to record it compressed to begin with doesn't seem right to me. That's why I go for 72 megabytes per second, uh, get the best quality that I can, then render it down using uh, my editing software. Yeah, so anyway, there is more to be said about this. Um, we're just going to go down to Advanced, and this is similar to Quick Sync Encoder. I never really looked into this, but basically you can configure your Quick Sync or your NVIDIA MVEC, the transcoding, you can configure it a little bit further. Now, all I really did is look it up online and people said that this one was the best. High quality, low latency. Um, there are other options here, low latency, high performance, there's a lossless in there. And I've never really messed around with any of them or changed any of these settings. So I can't really talk about that further. If you did really want to dive into it and really wanted to capture the best you can, then you need to research the presets online and do a little bit of testing for yourself. Um, same thing goes for the Quick Sync. However, I barely even looked at this once I got it working. It was a bit of a hassle to get Quick Sync to go. And then I was like, Do you know what, I'm just going to go with the MVEC. So I've sort of said uh, most of what's to be said there. The most important thing though are using OBS or even a program like Action is that you use the NVEC or the Quick Sync instead of your CPU to do the encoding. The other thing is to figure out what's right for you, what kind of bit rate you want to go at. For good quality videos on YouTube, I really think the idea is to capture um, as lossless as you can, you know, not fully lossless. Don't throw loads of money at it because it could end up on YouTube anyway. It's not a high fidelity streaming service. And uh, and yeah, just optimize it, optimize it for that. Capture it well. Don't let it impact your computer, and then give it to YouTube, which is going to compress the hell out of it. Um, so I pretty much covered everything that I wanted to say there. This has been a casual video of me just chatting my way through all the things that uh, I often share with other YouTubers. As I said earlier, if you're watching this video, chances are I've sent it to you. And uh, if you want any like feedback or advice or need help, the comments here is not the place to get it. This is my second channel. I don't really pay too much attention to it. You know, I'm not trying to provide support for the things that I've talked about. So, you know, take it, what I've said, and do what you want with it. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be it from me this video. Do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like on the video. If you don't know about my main channel, go and check it out. There'll be a link in the description box. I do Minecraft videos and stuff like that. But anyway, <laughs> thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.